Welcome to the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel. Because not all of us know how to hack the Gibson. Like and subscribe for more content. Hey guys, welcome to video three. So in video three, we're gonna actually look at the removal of an application on Linux, on Ubuntu, or Mint, as this particular system is. Should be the same. I wanna walk you through how to un uninstall things because we have three different packages installed. So what we installed through our script in our previous video was specifically installed PPA repositories. We installed apt get installations, so application through the apt configuration. Uh, we also installed through our package installation, so our .deb files, which are actually apt applications. So for the sake of this, let's just call them apt applications. Um, and then we also installed snaps. So what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through how to remove them manually. And then I also wanna walk you through how to script remove them. And I know scripting is a taboo word because usually it means complexity, but it's really not that bad in Linux. And I'll walk you through how to do that. So perhaps the best way to start is to show you the script side. So what I did is I copied over my application removal script that I wrote previous, which mimics the application install that exists here. And I'm just gonna right click on this and open it in the editor. And we're gonna do a comparison. So bear with me for a second here while I right click on this thing and I do move to new window. So that way we could have both side by side. And we're gonna see or do a comparison between the two. So we're gonna see the apt add apt repository multiverse. So you would think remove apt, but you'd be wrong. It's still add apt, but we're gonna remove this. We're gonna add apt and remove this. So it's just dash dash remove. So we would add that to all of our apt add repository configuration. Just the dash dash remove to remove it. Now you could use a single dash at R. I like to use dash dash remove. Um, then we're gonna go into the applications. So we have the apt get. So if we go down here to the apt get, we have apt get install the YT downloader. So if we go here, we have apt get remove versus apt get install. And that's the difference to add or remove an application through Linux, is instead of just typing apt get install, we would type in apt get remove. Now the same thing goes for our snaps. So sudo snap remove versus if we scroll down here, we have sudo snap install. So if we want to do an install of Teams, it's just install Teams for Linux. If we want to do a remove, it's just remove Teams for Linux. And that's all it is to add or remove programs through command line using Ubuntu or Mint. Now, if you want to script this, it's just as easy, right? We'll just put the shebang up there for the, the SH. And then we'll do the apt add, or rather add apt repository remove. We'll do the apt get remove for the apt re repository. And we'll do the snap remove for the snaps. Now, the one thing that I do want to talk about is this right here which is the apt get auto remove. And what this does is it cleans up all the garbage that's left behind. Now think of like CCleaner in Windows. After you uninstall something, you run the CCleaner and it finds a whole bunch of crap in the registry that had to do with a previous application. That's all this does, is it just removes the additional garbage that was left behind after removing the applications. You could run it or should run it really after removing every single application, but you could remove all the applications and then just run it once and it will remove all the excess garbage that's no longer needed for the old stuff. You could even remove it, run it periodically after you get updates to remove old garbage that's no longer needed for the updated versions. And then obviously after you remove everything, you just want to run a real quick update on the apt repository to make sure that you have the up-to-date PPAs installed on your system because now that you removed all this junk when you run that it should dump all the garbage that had to do with that that's no longer necessary. Okay so that's how to remove it through command line and again you could just grab it right click on it copy it and paste it in the other side so like for instance if we go in here the last thing I installed on this particular system I believe was Slack. So we could actually just hit the up arrow here and we could see that my last thing I installed on this actually was OBS Studio. So if I remove install and type in remove and I hit enter, 
it's going to uninstall the application and it removes the application. And that's all it is. I mean, if you want to install, you just type in install. If you want to type in remove, then it removes the application. And you'll even see the command inside of the command logic that we just ran. It says sudo use apt auto remove to remove them. And that's all the excess garbage that it can't find that it no longer has any need for anymore, but still exists in the operating system because it was part of the original package that wasn't actually part of the package. So in other words, it was a prereq to the package. So what it'll do is if you just run this command, so we'll just run sudo apt get auto remove, and we'll hit enter. It's gonna ask us now, hey, do you wanna delete 69.1 megabytes of storage? In other words, do you wanna gain this back to your system? Do you wanna delete this garbage that's no longer necessary? And we could hit Y for yes. Or above here where we typed it in, we could just hit space dash Y if we don't want the, to see all the, the prompts. Then we just hit enter. And that'll clean up the space that's necessary or the prereqs that were required for that particular application. Okay, so we have two portions left here. Um, the two things we have left to do is we have to go over how to remove a snap and how to reset our PPA back to default. So let's run through that real quick. Now, to remove a snap, we could simply just put sudo snap remove teams for Linux, right? We already know that we could do that. That's in our command, that's in our logic here to remove it. It's just the opposite of the install command for sudo snap install teams for Linux. So being that that's the case, we could run this and it'll remove teams for Linux through the snap store. However, what if you want to do it through the GUI? Well, to do that, it's actually pretty easy, right? We'll just click on the start button we're going to specifically look for Teams for Linux, and we're going to right-click on it, and we're going to choose Uninstall. Now, the problem with Snap is that Snap is not the apt configuration. And as such, when we try to do the GUI, it's just going to remove the shortcut. It's not going to remove the actual application. However, with that said, we can remove an apt that way. So let's do that real quick. So you can see the difference in the command logic in the GUI. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove VLC. So if I click on start and I specifically look for uh, sound and video, we'll see VLC me media player. Now, this version of VLC is the apt version. You could install the snap package, but I didn't. I installed specifically the apt version on this system. So to remove it, I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to do uninstall. You're going to note that we get a pop-up message about all of the packages that will be removed with it when we do the uninstall. And we're going to say OK. It's going to prompt us to put our password in, and it will uninstall the VLC package. Now, that's the difference between a snap and an apt. In a snapped configuration, or a snap configuration rather, we're going to have to run our actual remove command to remove the snap. However, we could still use the GUI to remove the snap, just not through the same way. So we can't right click on it and do uninstall. But what we can do is we can go to the application package location itself. So if we click on start, we go to app, and we go to the app center, which we know for the as the snap since we watched video one goes over specifically what that is. Okay, so we're in the app store, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna type in under the apps, Teams for Linux or specifically just Teams. And we'll see it here as the first thing listed. we click on that, we're gonna see it listed here. We could go in here now, we could click the uninstall and that will uninstall the actual snap package. That's the option in the GUI you could use, but I still think it's much easier just to run the single command to remove it. So let's click on uninstall. So it's gonna ask us in order to do this to put our creds in, so let's do that. and we'll hit authenticate. There it goes, it's uninstalling. So there it went, now it's uninstalled. Now if we wanna reinstall it, we can just click install. However, I still think that if you do it through the command line, it's easier. So for instance, if we wanted to uninstall it through the command line, we would've just ran the sudo snap remove teams for Linux. So since we're talking about snaps, I do want to point this out real quick. If you go to the actual Snapcraft website and we click on any of the applications here and we click on the install, we're going to see the install command line. Any application that you see on here that you want to install, you could run that line. 
However, if you want to remove it, any application that's listed in here, just rename install to remove to uninstall it. Now, in one of the previous portions of this video, earlier in this video, we uninstalled OBS Studios. And once you do that, there's really no reason to have the PPA listed in there any longer, right? Because there's no reason to check for updates for an application that we don't have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that. And what we're gonna spe specifically do is just change the install to remove and hit enter. And there we go, we've removed it. Okay, so we've gone over how to remove things from the GUI. We've gone over how to remove things from the app center location. We've gone over how to remove things from the PPA. We've gone over how to create a simple script to remove all of the things that we installed in the previous video. Let's go over one more thing, which is how to remove things through the GUI through the apt package or the, uh, the management, the app location. So to do that, we're just gonna click on start and we're gonna go over here to the software manager Okay, so once the software manager loads, what we're going to want to do is click on the three lines. And we want to go to Show Installed Applications. So right now, the only thing installed is the VLC because I didn't uninstall it when we uh, got the credential prompt. So if I click on this, I could drill into the VLC player itself. And from in here, I can uninstall the application as well just by clicking Remove. So that's another option on the apt configuration for apt configured packages to uninstall them. Now, assuming you know what their names, you could search. I mean, if there's a ton of them there and you need to do it, you could do that. But realistically, um, all you have to do is really just click on this, show installed applications. It'll bring you to a place. You click on whatever that application is. You wait for it to load the information on the application and you just click on remove. It'll tell you what's gonna be re removed along with it. You'll hit continue. It'll ask you for credentials. You'll put in your creds. and you'll hit authenticate, and there you go, it's removing. So that's how you could manage applications for the install as well as now the removal of applications using not only the command line through the terminal, but also the GUI, what works, what doesn't work, and then the cleanup method to clean things out. Something important that I do wanna mention before we end this video, which is, let's go back into the command line here and let's do a sudo apt get auto remove. We're going to do dash Y so we don't get prompted. We're going to hit enter. Now you're going to notice something that's different between the GUI removal and the command line. In the command line removal, when we ran the auto remove, there was nothing for it to remove. And the reason why is because when you do it through the GUI, it removes all the prereqs along with it. But when you do it through the command line, you have to define that you want to remove the prereq garbage from the system after you run the command. If not, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm assuming it's just a development. Maybe there's some kind of development. I, I don't really know. I don't know. Maybe the GUI knows specifically what application association is and the command line doesn't. But at any rate, if you do it through the GUI, it removes the prereqs. If you do it through the command line, you're going to have to run the sudo app get re, auto remove dash y. So that way you can remove any of the miscellaneous garbage that goes along with it. Again, think of this as like CCleaner for Windows. All right, guys, leave a comment down below. And let me know if there's anything else that I missed or anything that's helpful um, that I could add to any videos uh, going forward for these videos to try to help you guys understand how to use the Linux Mint operating system easy, um, specifically as a transition tool from Windows 10 because Windows 11 is coming. And uh, again, I, I don't suggest doing it, especially if you got older hardware. It's slow on new hardware. I don't think I would try anything that's not a 14th gen with 64 gigs of memory and a fifth gen uh, M.2 drive PCIe connected. Otherwise, I don't think I would even bother. It'd be a boat anchor. So, I mean, if you're not running that, and you're not willing to spend the money for it, I still think this is probably your best alternative. Again, let me know down in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching.